Hey guys, I'm Azia and welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be looking at the Coil Winder and also how we can use the Coil Winder itself to remotely, not, I wouldn't say remotely, but send uh, rotorcraft power over, uh, over a long distance using the uh, pneumatic item pump as well. So uh, let's just get started on to how to make, uh, not that chest, wrong chest, this chest. We're going to make one of these, we're going to need to make two of these. Uh, first thing you need to make is a, uh, a steel gear, which is just two, well actually a 2x steel gear, sorry. Uh, so you need two shaft units and two steel gear units. Uh, I think you need to use this one, yep. Just a normal crafting station, put two steel gears in the bin, middle, blah, middle, blah, blah, blah. You get this 2x steel gear, steel gear, which is what I was talking about. And then... We need to do is grab some more steel, a shaft, and three base. And that goes to the work table. Put the base panels along the bottom. Two steel ingots at the top. A shaft unit there, and a steel gear. Gets us our coil winder. Now, last thing we need to do, is, apart from grab the last coil, is grab four pieces of steel to make ourselves a couple of coils. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I think we can do it in the crafting station. Yep, we can. It's just four. And that pattern there gets us four wine springs. We're only going to need two of these for this system. That's about it. Okay, so I've already got uh, a power and lubricant needed. Uh, we're going to be using a magnetic static engine for this one. So I'm going to pop it up there. Uh, gonna leave it for a while. Okay, and then we're gonna need to put a gearbox down. I've decided to use a steel gearbox because um, since this thing outputs at uh, 2048 newton meters of torque, we're gonna need something substantial to handle the torque. So we're gonna use a steel gearbox. We're gonna set it into speed mode. Make sure you set it in speed mode because if it's in uh, torque mode that uh, 2000 or so torque turns into 32,000 newton meters of torque and this thing would immediately explode so make sure you've got it set in speed mode first which let's just check if it is speed mode yes it's getting lubricant that's good okay we'll leave that one right there and now what we want to do is we want to put our coil winder right there and as you can see uh, it's got one open side where you can see if there's a coil in there or not. There's not. Uh, it's got an input mode, an output mode, and when you want to charge a coil, they start off at zero kilojoules stored power. We're going to just chuck one into the put, uh, infantry there. Something over there is not working. Why are you not working? Okay, I'm assuming there's a glitch there at the moment, uh, and I'm going to pretend that I don't hear that. So, yeah. Everything's working over there. Nothing's broken. Nothing is broken. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the, uh, the other coil over here. We're going to have its... We're going to rotate it. So it's facing... Actually, no, not rotate it, sorry. Change it over to output. Now you've got a red output there, which means we're going to output this direction into our pump okay and what we're going to do is we're going to how do I do this again I've got a yep pneumatic item pumps now if the pneumatic item pumps um, they're very much directional and uh, with these uh, coil winders you can only pull coils out from the bottom so make sure you do that so we're gonna uh, input from the side like that I'm going to do a little bit of aerial work. Okay. Do that one. Okay. Oop. 
This is stupid. <laughs> uh, let's just make a platform for ourselves. Uh, yep, stone. Can we go through it faster, please? Ah, these item pumps, uh, they are useful, but unfortunately, they, they do lack some features, but of course. Um, the, say, like item ducks don't exactly have the features that I want either, so. Okay, so we want to run down, down, and then, then down again. Let's just fix that up. Okay, uh, up, there we go. It's working. Yep, excellent. Okie dokie, so items should travel in that direction to the side, yes. Okay, like that, and then that. change that direction so it should be facing down yep there we go okay so now we've got the pneumatic item pumps to go downwards right we need to then put a power source on them so we're going to use the DC engine uh, let us just put that one there rotate it so it's facing the right direction uh, get a lever Oops, we need to make another lever okay I can't put it on the bottom can I put it on uh, let us this okay so that automatically works it should pull the coil out and if it was facing the right direction the coil should go up there see okay so how do we stop this thing from pulling out the coil out too early okay so first of all we're just gonna uh, turn that engine off so it doesn't pull straight away we're going to tell this one to put some torque in uh, so 2 kilowatts um, it's important to note that see how we've got 0 kilowatts 1 all the way up to 16 kilojoules 16,000 kilojoules sorry this is dependent on how much torque you put in so if you have 2,000 torque um, you can get coils up to 2,048 kilojoules right um, since we're using a uh, 16 gear uh, we're going to get that 2048 down to 128 okay so we're going to get it up to 128 so we put it in here put an empty one in here we'll see it's going up to 128 okay we should get there pretty fast and it'll stop there pull it out um, and then what we do is we right click on the pneumatic item pump tell it that's a whitelist we only want it to pull out um, new uh, coil springs tell it not to ignore the metadata so make sure it says use metadata there and the idea is once as you can see here on the item ID it says 3076 4 and then 128 128 requires the uh, store power and that's the uh, the metadata that we want it to keep so if we put it in there and turn the engine on it should automatically pull out go over here and as you can see since it's on output mode it's already uh, transferring the energy along the shaft into our pump and if we just look at our pump she's 129 kilowatts at 8192 kilowatts at a speed of 1000 um, no matter what coil is powering this system if it's one of the cheap coils which we've got right now you always get this power output if we look uh, further along into it, you get these uh, high strength, high strength that uh, these ones. Don't make me say it. <laughs> these ones, and they output at uh, I think 131, 131 kilowatts of power. Um, but since we only need the little ones, we'll only use the little ones. And it's also important to note that. Um, with these ones, the more power you store into them, the more likely they are to explode. I've noticed somewhere between 1,024 kilowatts to 2,000 kilowatts is usually the point where they break. 
So this system where it's only going to 128, 128 is just fine. And then, okay, so once we've got the system to automatically send the power, I've noticed it really, we could have just gone from here to there. It wouldn't have been that much difference, but later on we can go from here to all the way across the base using the, these pipes. Okay, so what we'll do now is, okay, how am I gonna do this? Um, input from the side, okay. Uh, doop, doop. Let's get rid of this on this platform. I should really get an axe for myself. Okay. down here okay um here we go uh, uh, oh. screwdrivers one so it's going the right direction should be up yep there we go it should go up and into the side and we need to go this way uh, this way and then this this there we go so now this one um, with power okay with power should pull out of the bottom okay have I got a cobblestone no I don't let's make some cobblestone Okay, cold stone. Thick leather. We won't turn this on, on just yet. Uh, okay. First of all, we need to make sure. Okay, so once this gets down to zero kilowatts, we want it to pull out of here. So we'll go to the item pump just below it. Tell it that's a whitelist, not to ignore the metadata. Make sure, as you can see, you can't really see what it is, but we know it's a zero kilowatt one. So if we put it in here, zero kilowatts, turn that on, gets pulled out, gets pushed around up and then into this coil winder it should. Does it? Is it gonna do it there for us? Okay, yeah, that did it so fast that it pulled the spring out, went over to here, and then pretty much just charged it that fast, so we'll just put another one in here. Okay, you can use two on a system. 128, and as you can see, if we can just go pull this one out, new one comes in because it's got power in it. And that's how the system works. And then the one that gets poured at the bottom, which is be this one, comes in, gets charged up again. So that's a an odd system for doing it such a short distance, right? But what you can do is if you've got a, a fairly long distance, um, you can go from here all the way over to here to run, uh, say like a water pump, or if you're using the uh, these springs, which have a higher torque output. And, um, you can run down for borers, uh, and remember these are pneumatic uh, iron pumps, pretty much it's instantaneous travel, so uh, when the power gets released from here, it's down there already. I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay, pretty neat. So basically what this system saves me is one having to use one of these magnetic engines right up against the pump, um, two me having to create another tiny little power system here which I don't want to. And I think that's about it for today guys. Uh, uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more and stuff like that. Um, if you've got any requests let me know. Um, you want to tell me off, why not? And until next time guys. Ah.